what's up guys um, today I want to talk a little bit about Tim Lincecum the reason is I've gotten a lot of emails about him and he's one guy that a lot of people talk about it's been written a lot of articles um, a lot of websites everybody wants to know how does a guy this small throw as hard as he does now I'm not going to say that I absolutely know the answer to that, and I don't think anyone can absolutely know, well, this is exactly why he throws so hard. But if you watch him pitch and you watch him on video, there are certain things that he does that other guys that throw hard do the same thing. So I want to look at those things that really stand out, that are extremely different about him from guys that don't throw very hard, and then... A lot of the smaller guys that throw hard do a lot of the same things throughout their delivery. So, try to break them down today and talk a little bit about them. Uh, the first thing, and probably the most noticeable thing about Tim Lincecum, is the speed of movement at which he goes through his delivery. It is a, at a very high tempo, a high speed. He's moving really really explosively down the mound he's not stopping at different points in his delivery there's no gather at the top or a stop or a pause over the rubber it's one continuous movement from the time he begins his windup he's constantly picking up speed as he's moving through his delivery and down into his foot plant and if you talk to hitters that have faced him a lot of guys will say that it almost looks like he's jumping at them. That's how aggressively and how explosively he's moving down the mound at such a high rate of speed. One important part about how he drives down the mound, and there's been a lot of debate over do we stand tall and fall down the mound? Do we actually drive off the mound? Well, I'll tell you when you watch Tim Lincecum, he's not just falling down the mound, he's driving down the mound, he's driving off his back leg, he's getting his back leg completely extended before he starts to go into rotation and throw the ball. So that is one thing I'll say on that. Another thing you'll notice is how much he leads with his front hip. So he allows his front hip to lead him down the mound so that he can really drive off that back leg, keep the front hip leading on his target it's gonna get him a longer stride it's gonna keep his top half behind his bottom half so that he's gonna get better torque and separation as he goes into throwing the ball so let's go into the next thing this is probably one of the bigger things I will I notice with Tim Lincecum when I watch him throw is how late he gets his arm involved and I'm gonna show this how his arm, when he breaks his hands, and his arm starts to drop, it almost dangles there as his body is going down the mound. His arm doesn't get up into the throwing position early. It gets there very, very late. It almost pauses at the bottom. This is something really unique with the way he throws. A lot of hard throwers get their arm involved late in the throwing process, but Lincecum does it later than almost any pitcher. I'd say he's probably the latest one out of any pitcher I've ever seen. What this is going to do, getting your arm involved late, it's going to allow your body to move down the mound to continue to build up force and energy. It's going to allow your stride to be longer because a lot of times guys that have short strides, they'll either break their hands really high and their arm comes up too soon or they just pick their arm up too soon and once your arm starts to get up into the throwing position it's going to signal to your body or to your front foot to get on the ground so I can throw so your stride isn't going to be as long you're not going to get as close to the batter you're not going to allow your body to really build up that energy moving a longer distance or further distance so you really want to get that arm involved late you can do that by breaking your arms or your hands lower if you break your hands lower, your body's going to start to move down the hill. You'll break later. They'll get up later. Or 
like Lincecum, he has almost a slight pause where he dangles his arm down there. What this is going to do for you, we've already talked about a few things, it's going to get you down the mound further, it's going to allow your body to build up more force and energy, but this is really going to turn your arm into a whip. You're going to let the body do all the work, and you want to think about your arm almost just being along for the ride. You don't want to think of pitching or throwing as an arm activity. You want to think of it as a body activity where the body is doing all the work and then the arm is going to be just a slingshot. It's just the last thing to really come through and all that energy built up is going to come out the arm and that's when you're really going to see some pop on the ball. Now another important thing that a lot of baseball uh, pitching coaches will talk about is torque or separation between the hips and the shoulders and Linscombe, like a lot of other major league players or players that throw hard, get a good amount of separation between the hips and the shoulders. The hips are going to start to rotate while the shoulders are going to lag a little bit behind there and that's how you're going to build a stretch or torque as they call it. But the way to develop this torque is by getting the arm involved late, by letting the bottom half work, by letting the, the, the arms if you, if you delay your arm and don't let it get up so early and you have a late handbrake or you let your arm allow the body to get out and do its work and then get the arm up, that's going to naturally get your upper body in the right position as long as it all sinks together so that the hips are going to start to rotate, then the arm's going to start to come up and then you're going to get that separation or that torque and then the shoulders will start to rotate and the arm will come through. So. A way to do that is to make sure that the arm isn't involved too early in the throwing process. Next thing that I want to talk about that you'll notice when you watch Lincecum is his stride length. Now remember, all these things kind of go in together by moving down the mound at a good rate of speed, building up force, leading with the front hip, getting good extension on your back leg getting your arm involved late, all of that is going to add up to a longer stride. And if you watch Lincecum, his stride is over 100% of his body height. It's around 120%. Most pitchers are, I'd say a good stride is 100% of your height. Most pitchers are probably 85 to 100%. Over 100% is a long stride and you can see 120 percent is a really long stride so this is going to get him closer to the pitcher or excuse me to the batter but getting that longer stride shows that he's getting down the mound he's really letting that energy build up as he moves down the mound getting his arm involved later it's just going to add to more of a whip like motion in the throw and the last thing that i want to talk about is the sequence at which all this happens. If you watch him throw, he has perfect sequence. Everything happens when it's supposed to happen. It's one fluid, it really looks like a whip. Everything uncoils, he drives down the mound and then everything kind of uncoils at the exact right time. This is something that even if you try to do all these things by moving down the mound explosively, getting your arm involved late, leading with your front hip and doing all these things, it really comes together when everything happens at the right exact time. And that's just something that is built over time, over doing it the right way over and over again. And some guys can do it great, and some guys uh, aren't able to sync things up exactly the way they want it. So that's another reason why Lensicum is so good how he is able to sync up all these movements to just have one work beautifully with the other with the other with the other and it all adds up to a guy that can throw 95 plus miles an hour when he's not even six feet tall and he's 170 pounds so the important thing is these are some things that will help add velocity and when I watch Lensicum that's one thing I noticed that he does it doesn't mean that if you do these things you're going to throw 100 miles an hour but 
if you add some of these things into your mechanics, it can add miles per hour to your pitches, maybe a mile an hour, two, three, five, maybe ten. It, it depends how hard you already throw and, and what your mechanics look like. But I think if you add these things and, and you watch a guy like Lincecum, the takeaway is there are certain things that he does that other pitchers don't do, and I think these are the most important things that really get him to be a superstar pitcher. So let me know what you think. If you see things, if you think there's other things that are important or more important than some of the things I've listed, let me know, um, and we can talk about it. All right. Well, I hope uh, you got something out of this, and I hope you enjoyed. We'll talk to you later.